there, this is Heather Plett, and I am really excited to be introducing you to Barbara Winters. Some of you will know Barbara already. Uh, Barbara tweets under the name Joyfully Jobless. I think that's right, Barbara. No, it's Jobless or, Muse is my Oh, Twitter. sorry. <laughs> jobless Muse. Jobless is my website. Okay. Um, I came across Barbara, oh, about a year and a half ago, I think I I started. I think I started following you on tweet on Twitter, and then picked up your book actually, and bought your book, and um, loved your book, and loved your personality, and loved uh, you know everything that you stood for. And it was at a time when I was really dreaming about leaving my full time employment and and launching into self employment, and and really it felt like you were a companion on that journey for me. And and in fact, I, I was just reflecting back, and I think. The day that I tweeted, I just gave my notice. I think you were the first person that came back and said, yay, or something, you know. <laughs> so I think you've been my cheerleader right from the start of this journey into into a whole new um, place, a new self-employment for me. So uh, first of all, thanks for that, and, and uh, I appreciate your support and, and your being in my corner. So, Barbara, I uh, on that note, on a similar note, I want to ask you the question. I'm I'm looking forward to hearing your personal story of what it means to. Uh, I'm calling it letting go of the grounds. Well, I think I keep going through it. Mm -hmm. I think it's an. I don't think you do it once and it's done. And for me, it's really interesting because it's it's always been around work. And when I was growing up, I had this sense that there were many fascinating things to do, even though I didn't know anyone that did fascinating things. I just suspected it. And I think it's also because I was a reader. So I would read books about people who had adventurous lives, and that's what I wanted for myself. And then um, I also was kind of perplexed about this confusion because I have a sister who's two years younger than I and when she was about 14 she decided she was going to become an archaeologist and I just watched her walk straight down that road and I went off to college with absolutely no idea about what I was going to be and uh, I thought well I'll just go to college and then when I graduate, I'll be an adult and I'll know what I'm supposed to do. But when I got to college, they uh, insisted I declare a major, which I hadn't any idea about that. And so they said, you can't register if you don't declare a major. So I said English because... I had an English teacher in high school I thought was very worldly and sophisticated. And I thought, well, I'll just spend the next four years sitting around having intellectual discussions, talking about literature and wearing black and smoking cigarettes. And so that's kind of what college was like for me. But when I graduated, I had acquired a teaching credential and a fiancé. And so uh, already I was starting to kind of focus in on a path that was very respectable uh, in my part of the world. And I did that for a couple of years and couldn't realize, you know, I couldn't figure out why am I so bored with this. I know how to do it now. I, why should I keep doing it? And it took me a long time before I realized that about myself, that once I knew how to do something, I couldn't see any reason to continue doing it, that the fun for me was in the learning. And so um, I left teaching after about five years with absolutely no plan. And the hardest part for me, and, you know, it was interesting to me when you um, mentioned in the introduction, I'd been your cheerleader. I just feel such a uh, responsibility to be that because I know that anyone who steps off the kind of conventional path needs an enormous amount of support and encouragement because we're still such a minority mm -hmm. in our culture. So... I left teaching, got no encouragement, got lots of 
uh, criticism for throwing away my education, throwing away my security. But I just knew at that moment, if I didn't leave, the moment was going to come when I couldn't leave. And that was so terrifying to me. And, you know, there's that wonderful old, um, I think it's a Chinese or maybe it's Hindu saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that happened to me. And this man came into my life who was a was not, well, he was kind of a, um, a philosopher and a, a speaker and an author, but he was also an entrepreneur. And he was in the, was starting a new company and his vision was to build a national company. And I didn't know, I had never known anyone who thought in those terms that they were going to build this big thing. Mm -hmm. And he just became my mentor and I started exploring personal growth and development. So I don't, this was like, this transformation for me, I didn't have like a moment that was an epiphany at that time, but it came a little later on. And then, as so often happens, um... One night I picked up the newspaper and I read this little article about two women from New York who had started a business called Supergirls. And um, they had started it in one of their apartments and they kind of started out not really knowing what the business was going to be. And they had said something like, you know, we knew that we were really creative, we had a lot of energy. And it was like, what? You could start a business just using your creativity and energy? And they had done it from home? That was something I never had heard of. And they had written a book about their experience. And I went out and got a copy of the book the next day, the only copy in the bookstore. Mm -hmm. And I read it from cover to cover almost immediately. And I was absolutely dazzled. And that was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. And what I loved about their business was that it really was a series of projects and everyone was different. And that was so exciting to me that it, wouldn't, it wasn't like you had to learn how to do a job and then just did it over and over. Everyone would be different. And I was just dazzled by that. Mm -hmm. So I, of course, wanted to replicate their business. And my husband and I then decided to move from Minnesota to just outside of Madison, Wisconsin. I thought, this is it. But I realized almost as soon as I got there that Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, New York City were not the same environment. And that there probably wasn't going to be a huge demand for creative projects like they had done. And so I spent probably six months just trying to, you know, reading books about women who had started businesses. There weren't that many at that time. And reading books on starting businesses, which many of those books scared me because I didn't want to build a big organization. I just wanted to work for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I started reading things about being a freelance writer because even though I wasn't thinking about writing at that time, the whole freelance part of it was really felt good to me. And one morning, I can still see this, Heather. I was in the bedroom, probably, you know, making the bed. And it was like, I got it. I know what I want to do. And I realized that at that time, all of the self-help stuff that was out there was written by men for men. So I always had to change the pronouns and the stories, you know, when I was reading the books. And it was right at the time when the women's movement was just getting started. And I thought, I'm just going to take these ideas that have really made a difference to me and put them in a context for women. And the moment I thought that, everything just started to fall into place. You know, and I think that that, that we have those moments in our life where when we really get brave enough to listen to that, then the next thing that happens is we get beautifully startled by how the, the I don't know how to do this, starts getting answered for us. Are you ready to fly?